Hey everybody, it's Tammy Van Hollander, and I had to reach out to one of my good friends, Topaz Weiss, and she's an Expressive Therapies facilitator, and she has the Expressive Arts in Burlington, is what she runs, and does such cool stuff. And I, when I, Topaz was thinking about you and all these interviews, of just the importance of expressive arts, not just for children, but for adults. And when we look at the healing capacity of expressive arts, and I just knew that you would be a great person to help in terms of how do we facilitate for therapists our own self-care, as well as for the parents we work with, whether they're doing it on their own or incorporating it with their families, but you're one of the most creative people I know, and I love you, and I wanted to see you, so I wanted to reach out to you for this interview, so thank you so much for coming today. It is my absolute pleasure. I had nothing else on my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic to be here, and I'm so glad that you reached out, because creativity is really what's going to save us in this time of sheltering at home? Um, I know a lot of people who are really sort of at a loss for what am I supposed to be doing? And also people just feeling really sort of agitated. And then also I've got two teenagers at home. So I totally know what it's like to be having kids at home where you're like pulling your hair out. And plus you're trying to work because I actually do have a little bit of work that I actually do get to do. And so, so um, having a few Having a few sort of um, fallback creative ideas that are always set up for you is a fantastic way to just kind of get through the day. And so I brought some visual aids. Awesome. Okay, you ready? Do, do, do. Who's been eating pizza? <laughs> right? Like how many of us have been feeding our families pizza three times a week? Not me, of course. Um, anyway, on one of those pizza boxes, take out the, the round cardboard that holds the pizza and um, get yourself some uh, yarn. You know, you know what this is? Look at this. What do you think this is? Do you know, Tammy? Look closely. Um, I'm not Anything sure. Else? It's ticker tape. Really? It's ticker tape. Yeah, this is the stuff that people throw out of their uh, third story windows when the parade, when the Macy's parade goes down the street. Wow. And how do you I get know, that? Right? I, I, got it at, I got it at this crazy little resource place here in Burlington, Vermont. There were like six, six balls of it. And it's great color. And it's, it's a really kind of neat fabric. It's a little bit, it's a little bit stretchy, but you can use any kind of yarn. Mm -hmm. You can use literally any kind of yarn. And um, and you can go online and you can look at this. This is like uh, pizza. I think you just call it pizza back bowls or something like that. Go online and you can find tutorials on how you on how you set it up. But it's just like super easy. And even this is very meditative. Yeah. Just you just do 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 set it up like this. I don't know. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. This is awesome. Like this screen. It super, gives me so easy. many ideas of so many things that that you yeah. can be doing with you know with the bottom of a pizza box. But I love that. Exactly. And and so what this becomes is this becomes a loom. Mm. This becomes the loom. And I'm not going to finish doing the whole thing while we're talking. But, but essentially, you put a piece of tape on the back with the first piece. And then when you've gotten all the way to the end, you put another piece of, on the back with the second uh, piece of tape with the, the last piece. And then you take thread. And you go in, out, in, out, in, out, all the way around. And I have one here that I have almost finished that's not done yet. And so here, this is this is the back loops. So that's so wow. These, these, are, these are the threads that were the loom, right? These are the threads that were the loom. And this is, and the thing is, is that this is, so, so what is this one? You can make them so that they become a bowl, but this one is going to be for my jewelry because I'm one of these people who I take my jewelry off and I throw it down and I can't find it. I don't know if you're like that, but I'm not organized in that way of, of like, oh, I'm going to put my earrings all back where they belong. I, I'm terrible at that. So I have earrings all over the house. And what this is going to be is this is going to be my earring magnet. Is that when I take my earrings off, because this is so beautiful, I'm going to be inspired to put them on here. 
and this is going to sit on my counter and I'm going to know where my jewelry is. But I have made, and I don't have them here, they're at the studio, I do have these beautiful bowls that I made and, and you can make them so that they go up. Um, the great big pizzas, like the, the supersized pizza, it, it's harder to make that a bowl because it's harder to get the outside up unless you stop like right around here and then you can, you can turn it into a bowl. But the smaller pizzas are easier for making bowls. But anyway, you just you just take you take any kind of yarn that you have. You can um, you can go on eBay or you can go on Craigslist, and there's always people who are trying to get rid of yarn. So you can get very inexpensively, and you just take a needle, thread it through, and in out in out in out up down up down around and around. And it's very meditative, and it is kids love doing it. It takes a bit of time. And it's usually quiet time. And it's something that you can do together with your kids or it's something that they can do by themselves. Or you can just at the end of the day say, oh, I need to unwind it a bit. And this is, this is something that I wanna do. Um, and then you end up with something beautiful. I, I wish that I had a finished one for you, but. That is unbelievable that yeah. something like that can turn into something like that fall. I know, right? I know, it's, I mean, they're really nice. I, I, uh, I use this as part of my good grief workshop. And so in the workshop, we call them grieving bowls. And, um, and we have all kinds of things that we do with it, which actually, which actually, yeah, I mean, the viewers here could do this as well. When we change from one thread to the next, if we tie a little knot on the end to continuation, um, in each knot, we put either a hope or a prayer or a loss or, or, um, or something that we want to remind ourselves, something we want to remember, we put that into the knot. Um, sometimes people will thread beads on and the beads will, will represent things. I mean, you can go as deep as you want to with it, or it can be just a very light activity. Now, another visual aid that I brought for you, this is the one that I made um, in Thursday's open studio. I do an online free Zoom open studio of Thursdays at 1230. And, um, and this is magazines, this is collage. Collage is a fantastic way to sort of get into the metaphor, to just get into the zone. You know, you look through your magazine and my encouragement around this with you, when you're doing collage is try not to think too much about it. You know, go through a magazine, if you see an image that sort of strikes your interest, you're like, oh, that, just rip it out, just rip it out. And like this one, this one, I didn't use scissors at all. I just ripped. You know, so you don't have scissors, no problem. You just, just rip it. And, and then once you have it, a few images, find a background, find something that you want to have in the background, or you can just use, you know, paper. You can just use like, I just so happen to have some paper. <laughs> you know, you can just use a piece of paper as your background and then put the images on top of them. Um, with kids, it's great because when you see what images that they, choose usually what will happen is once they start putting them together they'll create a story around it and that's a really nice way to work with the collage is just paste the images down how they seem to fit just just without thinking too much about it just see how it comes together then sit back and look at it and if you're the type of person who likes to journal doing a little bit of free writing about what you see and it doesn't matter what you're writing because nobody's going to be reading it but just do a little bit of free writing about what you see. Um, with the kids, ask them to tell you a story about it. You know, do, do a little bit of play, play act with it. You can, you can um, I mean, depending on how big your, how old your kids are and how, or, or how, um, how willing to engage they are, you can say, hey, I'm gonna be the baby, you be the world. Let's have a conversation. You know, or, or you can act out, you can say, I'm the owl, I'm the owl. And then I can say, well, what do you see? And then the owl says exactly what she sees in the picture and where she's gonna go and what she's gonna do and what she's gonna have for lunch. You know, it's, it's an opportunity to engage. It's also an opportunity with yourself, it's an opportunity to engage with your kids. Um, what I really like about collage and also about the, the, the loom bowl making is that it's an opportunity to slow. You know, it's an opportunity to get into what I call into the zone, into the realm of metaphor, into the place where nothing really matters. It's just the creative flow that's coming through, through your body. And um, 
Yeah, so those are those are two options that that I had for you. A little collage, a little bowl looming, a little I mean a little bowl weaving. I love and, it. Um, you know, in in any in any chance that people get to slow down and draw, I mean, even doodling, even whistling. Like, I don't know about you, but when you were a kid, I'm a little bit older than you, but when you were a kid, when you would go for a walk in the springtime, did you hear people whistling, like whistling through their open windows in their house or whistling while they were working on their cars? You know, we've become a culture that doesn't whistle. And whistling is whistling or humming. It's very soothing. It's extremely soothing. And it's fun. You can whistle while you work. I was never a good whistler, but I, I agree. I mean, and I love, I love to talking about the collage work. And whenever I think of collage and I love doing collage, it really parallels so much with sand tray work and the images and the prompts and the things that we do. And as you're talking, it really makes me think about for many of us who are doing teleplay therapy and doing this type of work and don't have all of our miniatures and don't mm -hmm. have sand, what a wonderful way to be able to bridge it and to be able to do collage work with these images and, mm -hmm. um, and really have that same type of power that the sand, mm -hmm. at the sand and the images have. So it just makes me kind of go back to that. It's like all these things we kind of are in the toolbox, but as I continue to interview and talk to people and hear about the collage, I'm like, yeah, I need to be doing more collage work. And, um, and here's, a, here's a little trick, here's a little tip. Mm -hmm. You know how when you're working in your tray, um, you get to move where you put your figures. You, know, you put your figures down and then you get to make decisions on, on what they do and where they go and who, who they interact with. The same thing is true if you use tape with your collage. If you, don't, if you don't use paste, like if you don't use glue or like a glue stick, if you put a little tab of tape on the back of your image, then you can move your, you can move your images around just like you can move your, your figurines around in the tray. And so, so it's sort of like a little portable sand tray that people have at home and they didn't even know it. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> so Topaz, before we end today, you had mentioned about these Facebook Lives, which are super cool. So can you tell us a little bit more about them and how people yeah. could tune in? Yeah, so, um, so it used to be Facebook Live, but there were all kinds of problems with Facebook Live, just technological problems. And so um, on Facebook, Expressive Arts Burlington has the Expressive Arts Burlington page. And connected to that page is a group called Friends Who Like Expressive Arts Burlington. And if people join the group, which you get automatic joining, so it doesn't like, there's, it's, you don't have to fill in like a release form. Um, if, you, if you join Friends Who Like Expressive Arts Burlington, then we will be posting the Zoom link for Open Studio. So every Thursday from 12.30 to 2.30 Eastern Daylight Savings Time, that's what we're in right now, right, EDT? Eastern yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> not everybody yeah. listening, yeah, but we you are. And I are. Yeah. But other people <laughs> might not be. So, so if, you, if you consider that it's the Eastern time zone from 12.30 to 2.30, I do a totally free open studio and people zoom into it. We do a little check-in and then I'll do a guided meditation. And the guided meditation is always a little bit different. And then we spend some time just creating. And so I encourage people just bring some of your favorite art materials, or you can do writing. I mean, some people choose to use that time to write. Some people choose to use that time to, to do visual art. Um, there's one woman who came in and she decided she wanted to be moving. And so you know, we couldn't see her, she was off to the side, but she was spending that time um, doing some creative dance to the music that I had playing. And, um, and so then we come back together at two o'clock and we share and we witness. And it's just really, it's surprisingly intimate mm. you know, and, and we're all just working on our own at home. We're not engaging during the creative time. We're just engaging with our own work, but then afterwards to see what, what gets created is, is it's pretty amazing. Wow. It's really fun. Sounds beautiful. Yeah. Topaz, so thank you so much for thank sharing you. some insight and coming on today. So be well, and I hope to see you soon. I know, you do well too. And to all the people who are watching, stay safe and stay well.